What's up, guys? Josh Pate here from 24-7 Sports, joined as I am this time every week by Steve Wilfong, National Director of Recruiting. Steve, it's a really busy time. Miami, staying red hot, so there's nowhere else to start. Let's go Leonard Taylor, five-star defensive tackle, commits to the Canes. Your thoughts on him and the instant impact it has on Manny Diaz's class. They need a player like Leonard Taylor at Miami. The Hurricanes had one of the best defenses in the ACC last year. Those guys did their part on that side of the ball, and they're expected to have one of the better defenses uh, in, in college football this year, spearheaded by a defensive line that has uh, the uh, college football's returning sack guy, Gregory Rousseau, and they bring in Temple transfer Quincy Roche, and they have Jonathan Ford and Nesta Silvera in the middle. I don't know if any of those guys will be back on their defensive front next year. Uh, uh, and, and so you bring in a guy like Leonard Taylor, who uh, could play any of those positions across the front from Miami, the number one defensive tackle in the top 247 player rankings, number four prospect overall. He's a guy that Miami recruited uh, as, a, as a player that can be versatile and, and play all those spots across the front. And he's going to be an instant impact guy for Manny Diaz and company, and, and they're going to need him to be with, with the potential turnover that they're going to have uh, at that position following this season. Miami up three spots to number eight in the 24-7 sports composite team recruiting rankings with Leonard Taylor. And then beating Florida uh, for a prized in-state recruit uh, adds a, a cherry on top to this one. So, Steve, even before this happened, Jason Marshall has been obviously a name on every Miami Hurricane fan's mind. He's a big-time recruit, also five-star in nature, out of South Florida. And last week, there was a lot of smoke around something that could be coming. A lot of things seem to trend Miami's way. Thus far, he remains uncommitted. So the natural question to follow up on Taylor is, what kind of impact, if any, will that have on Jason Marshall's ultimate decision? Well, I think these guys are making their own decisions. Miami Palmetto is a loaded football team, and they have several uh, touted guys on the roster that are, are doing their own thing that's best for them. Uh, for Jason Marshall, uh, I think right now he feels that Miami is, is the school uh, that's best for him, but that doesn't mean things can't change. I don't know if he's going to make a decision sooner or later over the weekend. As you said, it did seem like he was close to popping for Miami. I do think the Hurricanes moved into pole position for the five-star corner, uh, but I still think that Alabama is a program that's giving him a lot to think about. I think that they're the, the other school in the mix near the top uh, with, with Florida rounding out the top three, but I, I like my forecast for Miami, uh, but if things change, I think that it would be the Crimson Tide who sit at number two in the 24-7 sports composite team team rankings with a they're trying to reel in Ohio State uh, a, a, a big uh, Jason Marshall would certainly be big in, in that fashion of getting them closer uh, to the Buckeyes and and I think uh, Alabama continues uh, to chop wood on Jason Marshall and and uh, uh, maybe potentially getting him to slow things down and and, and take this thing a little further out uh, but if he commits soon I, I like Miami uh, in, in that regard. Steve, a lot of people have been asking us about a couple of five, our four-star running backs here. So let me start with LJ Johnson out of Texas. What's the very latest on his recruitment? Well, I forecasted Texas A&M uh, either back in the spring or early summer. I lose track of time. And I think the Aggies are still uh, in, in a great spot for one of the uh, most dynamic and electrifying running backs in, in the country. And LJ Johnson, they've recruited him as their top running back target the entire cycle, uh, where maybe some other schools have recruited a handful of guys equally. Uh, Jimbo Fisher and, and Tommy Robinson and the Aggies settled in on LJ Johnson and, and said, you're our number one guy from the beginning. And, and I think that put them in a great position to land him. There was a time where I thought Georgia uh, was the, uh, the biggest competitor for, for Texas A&M. Uh, but I think that's kind of changed a little bit. I think Texas, the Texas Longhorns have made a major move uh, in, in recruiting LJ Johnson, talking to someone close to, to LJ. And then you also read Mike Roach's article on Horns 247, where LJ himself said uh, that no program's recruiting him harder than, than Texas. So I think uh, they really like Stan Drayton over there. And, and that's the type of guy that he could see himself playing for. And Georgia's still involved. 
uh, but uh, the dark horse, I'm told, is Auburn. Um, and, and Chad Morris has all those ties to Texas, Auburn's offensive coordinator. Obviously, their quarterback recruit, Demetrius Davis uh, from North Shore, who's the most decorated high school football player in the country. He has the respect of all his peers uh, in the Lone Star State with those two fat uh, state championship rings on his finger and, and the fingers in the state's largest class. Demetrius Davis uh, has LJ Johnson thinking about playing with him at Auburn. Um, but I'm going to stick with A&M on, on the crystal ball for now. Uh, but I'm really watching Texas now as they try and make a move and land another big time back to come in behind Bijan Robinson, who I heard has looked excellent and, and pushed him in that running, running back room a year from now. Let's go up to Michigan, Steve. Donovan Edwards, four-star running back there. Donovan Edwards is still talking to a lot of schools, and he has, this per he has the personality, uh, he, a genuine kid, uh, a great kid. That uh, when, when these schools talk to Donovan Edwards, I think they all think they have an excellent shot uh, to land uh, the uh, uh, every down back out of the state of Michigan. Uh, terrific in between the tackles, make you miss ability, good speed, and, and, and then can be dynamic in, in the passing game. Easy to see why he's so coveted. Uh, Michigan's the crystal ball uh, forecast. I still feel uh, good about that. You talk to several people around the recruitment. Uh, they think that Michigan is, is the one to beat. Um, Oklahoma is a program that's pushing hard and, and seems to be moving near the top of the list. Oklahoma has an outside shot to finish with the number one recruiting class in the country. They would need that dream class to come together. That would include uh, a player like Donovan Edwards. And, and he seems interested. Michigan State still taking their cracks uh, at Donovan Edwards as well. Uh, sounds like he's still having good dialogue with, with Penn State as well. Uh, but Michigan, I, I think that they're the ones to watch for Donovan Edwards. And if they can go out, and Michigan's sitting at number eight right now, or excuse me, number nine, as Miami just moved past them in, in the 24-7 sports composite team rankings. If they can add Donovan Edwards to what, what has really been some outstanding wide receiver recruiting the last two cycles, uh, and Xavier Worthy, uh, the bell cow of this class, with his speed and, and the guys like Roman Wilson and, and A.J. Henning, a year ago in the running back. I did a story, I know I'm starting to ramble, Josh, but I uh, did a story with our Brad Crawford, 10 impact guys, uh, in, true freshman impact guys in college football. I put running back Blake Corum uh, on there for, for Michigan. I think he's gonna be tremendous from last year's class, uh, but Donovan Edwards would, all, would give them a, a, another uh, major piece in that backfield. And we're seeing uh, teams use multiple players at, at that position. Um, I, I think Donovan Edwards has a little bit different of a skill set than, than Blake Corum. They would they would mesh well together. Uh, it, it would take Michigan, a, a school that hasn't had a running back drafted since Mike Hart. And, and all of a sudden you go Zach Charbonnet, Blake Corum, and, and potentially Donovan Edwards. Uh, that's as good a running back recruiting, uh, in, in my opinion, as you're going to see from coast to coast. So love the way Michigan's recruiting offensive skill players since Josh Gaddis uh, got there. Sharon Moore has been a star on, on the trail for Michigan recruiting in state and in, in the Midwest. I think he's the number four, uh, number four in the 24-7 sports national recruiter rankings. So uh, like Michigan for Donovan Edwards. I know I've said that like six times already in this segment, uh, but I'm sure the Michigan fans don't mind me saying it a seventh. Obviously, a lot going on. You're going to want to keep it locked on 247sports.com for all the latest. It changes by the minute, but Steve Wolfong on top of it all. Steve, it is a pleasure as always, sir. We'll talk again next week. Take care, y'all.